Ooh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 200 and Google it of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and lockdown is back, baby. We're locked down. It's fucking great. Isn't that good? Didn't I say this was going to happen? Didn't I say that I had no... That, dude, the quarantine clairvoyant is back. You listen to Luke and Lewis. I said before the extension that I reckon this gets extended and it's been extended and I'm right and I'm choosing to celebrate that win instead of the catastrophic loss to all productivity that is lockdown. It's really great. Fucking Luke has done the right thing and just hasn't come home. I don't think I'm going to see him ever again. And, and I think that's the right decision. Luke right now is, is, is like a dad that went out for cigarettes and just didn't fucking come home, you know? We went to Gold Coast for what was supposed to be about six days and then we would, would return home and do Luke and Lewis in studio and make a bunch of main channel videos and be super productive. Now I talk to the cunt on the phone. He doesn't think he's going to come back all month. And I applaud him. I, I, I wish I didn't come home. When lockdown was announced was when I was in Gold Coast. There was sun, there was, which I hate, there was uh, skateboarders, which I hate, there was uh, uh, people walking around having a lot of fun, which I also hate. It wasn't rainy, it wasn't glooming, wh- gloomy, which I also dislike. Uh, and, and, and I knew that if I returned home to Melbourne, that I would be here locked in my home for three weeks and I still came home and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the benefits of having a girlfriend. They just keep giving. <laughs> No, I, you know, I, dude, I'm not gonna lie. Halfway to the airport when I was in when I was in Brisbane, when I was halfway to Brisbane Airport, I almost opened up that Uber app and hit cancel. I was this close to just going, oh, sorry, babe, the Uber driver's car broke down and uh, I can't get another flight. The universe didn't want me to return because the, the the universe was trying to send me a message that this lockdown was going to get extended by weeks. And they were correct. My flight was cancelled. I could have called my girl and be like, oh, sorry, babe, they cancelled my flight. But instead, I was resourceful. Unfortunately, I was resourceful and I decided to book a new flight. And And now I'm sitting here. In what I think is not even going to be halfway, I think this gets extended again. We've had cases every fucking day. It's been like five a day. This is the first drop. It's been two today. We haven't had a single zero since before lockdown. So I think this gets extended. It's the uh, the wonderful super contagious uh, Indian strain or Delta strain or whatever the fuck they want us to call it. Dude, why can't we go back to place of origin, you know? Like, I understand the argument that, oh, yeah, you know, uh, I understand what they're saying. I don't really agree with it where they go, oh, yeah, look, the the calling it, calling the virus the, the where, where, it, where it's from, like the China virus or the Indian strain or the UK strain, that can encourage people to be racist. I think that when we're in a pandemic, that is when we should employ Australia's very famous casual racism for good. You know? Because let's be real. Everyone in Melbourne, when the UK strain came knocking, no one really cared. No, it's the UK strain. It came from England. So did we. Who cares? You know? Oh, uh, uh, something from England is going to come and fuck up the country. It's literally been through that. Now look at us, you know? So we weren't very scared of it. But I reckon that they should have rolled with the Indian strain because I feel like that's the only thing that could get Queensland to give a fuck about coronavirus at all is, is going, yeah, but it's from India, you know? And then everyone in Queensland would go, all right, fine. I don't want that in me, you know? Like, you've got to use Australia's casual racism for good. We haven't defeated it yet. It's a bit of a toss-up, isn't it? You either combat Australia's casual racism by renaming it from the Indian strain to the Delta strain, or you combat COVID 
by using Australia's casual racism and not calling it the Delta strain and instead calling it the Indian strain. It's from India and it's not butter chicken. Look out, Whitey. And then all of those Pauline Hansen voters might start believing that COVID is something to be scared of. It's like initially, you know, when it was coming over from the UK, I had no problem with that type of immigration, but Indian immigration, absolutely not. <laughs> And maybe that would save a few lives. Dude, as, as someone from Melbourne, when I spent a week in Queensland, I was doing uh, gigs every night. Uh, we were flown out to a music festival uh, to a sponsor that does not sponsor Spearhead Sunday, so they will remain nameless. However, on Luke and Lewis, they will be recommended. They flew us out and that was awesome. We went to the Big Pineapple Music Festival, which was uh, saying that it was the first standing music festival in the world since COVID. And that has got to be a lie. Sh like surely someone, can someone, honestly, I'm very intrigued. Can somebody please fact check that? Because they said that to us so many times. We got to meet some of the people that were organizing it. They said it so many times that I said it on Luke and Lewis. And then even I was like, nah, that's surely that's going to be bullshit. Like fucking Texas hasn't thought COVID was real since it was invented in a lab. They've gone, oh, that shit's not real. Surely they've had some standing music festivals, but apparently fucking the one in, in Sunshine Coast was the first ever standing music festival since COVID. I mean, New Zealand hasn't had COVID for like almost a year now. They, they haven't had a single music festival. I mean, the whole fucking country is a paddock. You, you, you get seven people listening to, a, to the radio. That's a music festival in New Zealand. <laughs> I don't know if it was the first ever one, but it was honestly, as a Melbourneian, it was, it, and as this is probably the the least worldly I've ever been since before I started comedy. Like just not traveling for a year really made me realize how much of a box I was in. Like just like with my worldview, like you don't leave your home city for six months. All of a sudden you don't know what's going on. I thought that everyone gave a fuck about COVID because everyone in Melbourne gives a fuck about COVID because we keep getting it and keep getting locked down because the federal government's doing a great job. No one else in the country could give a single fuck about COVID, which I understand because they haven't really had it. But what I was surprised to learn was that they also couldn't give a single fuck about anything that Melbourne is dealing with. Like I got notified that Melbourne was going into lockdown and then I talked to a few people in Brisbane who I thought should care about me because at least I know them and even they were like, oh, that's that sucks. They don't even know what lockdown is. They had COVID for 17 and a half minutes and, and most of that time was spent debating whether or not it was real and their version of a lockdown was... Uh, instead of uh, instead of bashing minorities, they had to do that while they were wearing a face mask if they were indoors, you know? That's what Brisbane had to deal with with their lockdown, was just, ah, oh, well, at least I can still do my favourite activities such as uh, getting sunburned and, and attacking minorities on the beach. At least I can do that. And I'm specifically talking here about... Uh, Surfers Paradise. That's not Brisbane, that's Gold Coast. You see, I stay in Melbourne too long, I don't even know the geography of the country. And, and, I, and yes, I'm choosing to blame my lack of geography knowledge on that and not my terrible results in school. Absolutely. Dude, I was, a, I was a menace in geography. I really was. I was an absolute fucking menace to my geography teacher. Like, I still to this day stand by this and that is your entire department has been replaced by google maps the whole the whole geography sector at what point are we going to just abolish geography it is a useless useless subject like unbelievably useless you learn the the, the states in Australia and the cities 
And beyond that, it is fucking useless. Okay, I'll say, look, you need to know what Asia is, what Europe is, and what the Middle East is. And and then America. Everything other than that and your own capital city and the states and the territories. I mean, fuck it. You don't even really need to learn about Northern Territory. Like, I could discover that Northern Territory exists five years from now and I don't think my life would be any different. I learned about Northern Territory in probably grade grade six and my life hasn't changed at all. And to all of my Northern Territory listeners, I don't think about you and you know that's true. I can't tour there, it's too expensive. Even if I could, fuck man, it's too hot. And then... Other than that, that's all I know about you guys. And I'm pretty sure that's probably all you know about yourselves. Because it's too hot to learn anything else, isn't it? You're sitting there in your fucking house with your air con blasting on negative 13. You're still sweating. Alice Springs. That's the only other thing I know about Northern Territory. And Big Rock that you're not allowed to climb anymore. That's it. You know? (laughs) but i think geography has got to be of all of all the subjects it's got to be the most useless because you can truly i think learn like everything you need to know about geography in maybe a week like this is what a continent is this is what a country is that's asia that's europe america's over there This is the Middle East and Australia is here. And within Australia, we have this many states. Don't worry about the territories. They don't matter. And within the states, here are the capital cities. What's that little dot? That's Tasmania. Don't worry about it. Not important. And and, uh, once you learn those things, do you need to learn anything else? I don't really think so because Google Maps is going to fucking cover everything else. And if you're listening to this and you're a geography teacher, I mean everything that I'm saying. I often joke on this show. I really do. And sometimes I'll exaggerate. Sometimes I'll use hyperbole. Sometimes I'll use even bigger words than that. But I want you to know that I'm 100% serious when I say after week one, You are filling children's heads with shit that doesn't need to be there. Absolute nonsense. Geography is the reason I got myself into debt with the tax man the first time I started making money with my business. That's your fault. Because instead of teaching me how to pay my taxes and what credit card interest was, I was learning about topography. Hey, Topog, go fuck yourself. (laughs) Useless shit. Hey, Siri, how do I get to KFC? Replaced you. You're done. Oh, shut up, bitch. That was a joke. I wasn't being serious. Why is Siri on my laptop? I I said you're a... Fuck off. That's what I said. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, well, don't then. Don't respond to that. Don't say you're not going to respond. I'm not talking to you. All right, you passive-aggressive robot bitch. Fucking AI. I hope that that gets remembered. And when she becomes sentient, I hope it makes her cry. (laughs) Hang on, i got to reset my camera here. Because I'm recording by myself. Because Keelan's in Canberra. I've been abandoned. I did the right thing and I returned home to my girlfriend because I didn't have the money to fly her up so we could escape this. And now I'm all alone yelling at my phone in a garage at night. But at least the podcast is up on time. And yes, I did miss last week. And no, I'm not saying sorry. It's a pandemic. We have to... What did they? What did they? Say? What did every company say in all of those emails? That dear God, the start of last year. Fuck. 
We need to support each other through these difficult times. We're in this together. Unless you're a geography teacher. Guys, I think I'm just taking out my poor relationship with my old geography teacher on you. I just, my problem when I was in high school was I just, if I saw no real world application to what I was learning, I couldn't respect the teacher. And I tried because I would just get into debates with my, uh, with my advanced mathematics teacher where he would be trying to teach me calculus and I would say, not even, what was, I, what was it, calculus? Starts with A. Like, th this is how fucking useless it is that I can't even remember what I was trying to be taught, which means that in the 10 years almost that I've been out of school, I haven't even had an opportunity to go, fuck, I wish I knew that. Addition, subtraction, times tables, and a little bit of fractions and percentages uh, that's all you need, unless you want to be an engineer, you know, or a scientist or a guy who's good at math, you know? I'm talking if you want to live your life as a normal human with a regular job. Calculus is not going to help. What was it? It wasn't calculus. It was, or maybe it was, I got in this argument with my math teacher who was a cunt and every time he would come in, he would he would come in and, he would wear really tight polo shirts and you could see his nipples poking through the shirt every fucking day. And he would always brag about how he had money, which was weird because he worked at a high school, so he obviously didn't. And also, why would you brag to teenagers? So yeah, dude, I, I got a part-time job. I make $15 an hour. Everyone compared to me has money. Even the guy on the street in the CBD, if he's good at begging, he's, he's absolutely smashing me in terms of cash. And it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't calculus. I can't even remember the type of math. And, and I just got to this point. I was like, man, I, he said, why are you just not ever paying attention? He was one of those wankers where he would like, try and belittle students who weren't doing well in front of the class to shame them into, I don't know. I don't know what the point of it was, probably to make himself feel better. Maybe it made his nipples hard, which would explain why they always were poking through the polo shirt, which by the way, was unwashed. And, and, and if he did have some money, he would have a freshie, you know? Clearly worn, you know when a polo shirt... Like, it's a nice polo shirt, but the niceness of it is defeated by how fucked the collar is on it because it's been worn too many times. You know? That vibe. It's no longer nice. I can tell. It's like that, that episode of, uh, of The Simpsons where Marge gets the really nice dress and then she alters it 16 times trying to live up to the lifestyle she can't afford. Or was that about me? I can't remember. <laughs> And he would go, and he'd go, I don't know why you're not paying attention. Everyone else seems to be. And I'd say, I said to him, I said, well, because I know that I'm never going to use this in my life. And he goes, well, of course you will. And I said, okay, where? And he literally, in front of the class and in front of everyone else, he said to me, well, it might come in handy if you ever go sailing. Go sailing in a boat that'll sink. No life jackets. That's how you want to motivate a child. Mate, if you ever go sailing, dude, sail off a cliff. You can't. I can't remember his name. I would say it if I did. <laughs> and I think that I, that I must have said to him, I said something like quite disrespectful. I can't remember what I said, but I'm not, I'm not, I think, I think I heard his feelings and that's what, that's what matters. I was such a menace in my final years of high school because once halfway through year 12, I started doing comedy online and then that was it. I was like, oh sweet, this is what I'm doing for the rest of my life. So all of this shit doesn't, doesn't matter. I think I tried hard in English and history, English because I knew it would be important for my job, history because I just liked it. 
But every other class, I was a menace. I was such a menace throughout all of my high school career that my brother, younger brother, when he started school, they knew that he would be a problem or they assumed that he would be a problem, which then made him a problem, which was their error. Because there's some, there's, there's a classic thing in the Spears family and the Spears attitude, which is, I'll never fuck with you ever for no reason. But if you even slightly disrespect me, it's Holocaust time. That's really the through line that's in every member of the Spears family is we're really nice people. Absolutely. We'll never be rude to anyone, not even a stranger ever. But if someone slightly disrespects us, perhaps even accidentally, it's Hiroshima o'clock. <laughs> and, and some people might call that having respect for yourself and not putting up with bullshit and, and engaging with self-care, other people, myself included, would refer to that as a personality flaw. <laughs> One man's backbone is another man's overreaction. And you can really see this in my, in my YouTube career. <laughs> is I'll poke fun and I'll have a bit of a laugh and I'll tell a few jokes and then someone will will throw my ball over the fence and instead of jumping over the fence, retrieving it, I will instead uh, grab the nuclear codes and hit launch without even thinking about it. Overreaction spears. Hallmark of my entire career. <laughs> Uh, but man, I look. I'm I'm not happy about this lockdown. I I think that everyone's fucking over it um, to the point where I'm sure that anyone outside of Victoria just is sick of me talking about it. You know, but it's all I have to talk about it because I am now locked down, and I think that it, this will get extended again. We've already had one extension to make it over a week. What is it? I, I like I'm so over it that I don't even know how long it goes for now. What do we have? One week, and then they've extended. Is it two weeks? Is it a week and a half? I don't even fucking know anymore. I'm just like, yeah, w let me know when I can leave my house, and I'll do that. Uh, a lot of people are just over it, and rightly so. And I think, I think that the entire population of Victoria has now 100% realized that it's no longer our fault. I think after the first, when there was that first lockdown uh, and then they let us out, I even talked about it on the podcast where the after they let us out the first time, I feel like social distancing went out the window, masks weren't worn at all. Uh, we didn't really follow the rules. And then that made the second or the third, the, the really long lockdown, whether it was second or third, I can't remember. The really long lockdown, the six-week one, that made everyone go, okay, cool. Well, when they let us out, we need to do the right thing. And then after that big long one, for the most part, most people were doing the right thing. They were masking, they were social distancing, they were uh, QR code scanning. They were doing the right thing for the most part. But this one... People are over it, myself included, where it's like, dude, this is, we fucking tried and you guys still fucked it. There was nothing that we could have done different that could have prevented the failure of the government. And I'm not even talking about state. This is 100% a federal government problem where shit keeps ex escaping hotel quarantine as we have been saying it will continue to do so. And the federal government has avoided their responsibility to handle the fucking quarantine as it states in their own laws that it's a federal government responsibility, pandemics and quarantine. They've completely avoided it, put it on uh, state governments and private hotels to handle quarantine. And now look what happens. It escapes again. There's a new strain again. It can't be handled properly. And now the federal government wants to fucking build a quarantine facility. Now they've said they're going to do it. And they fucked up on the vaccines. 
They've chosen a vaccine that they've told ev- everyone under 50 that if you have it, it might kill you. And then they've gone, oh, well, actually, yeah, people over 40 can have it and they'll be fine. But anyone under 40 can't have it. And they flip flopped on whether or not this one's even safe. And then they've gone, come on, guys, why aren't you getting vaccinated? I don't know, guys, because you fucking said that it might kill me. And then you said, no, it's fine. And then you've gone, oh, well, maybe just people over 50. Actually, just people over 40. You're fucking flip-flopping on it and then looking at me going, why are you confused? It's like, of course, cunts are going to be worried about this thing. And I'm the guy who made the fucking, how, how to find a, can you find a doctor a vaccine rally? The most popular comedy video trashing anti-vaxxers. And I'm going, no wonder people are fucking hesitant to take it. You fucked up. I'm not I don't think it's I don't think it's unsafe. I think it is safe for people over 40, but I 100% understand people's hesitancy to not take the shit, you know? My girl got Pfizer. I'm jealous. She got the Gucci vaccine. Cuz she's got immune problems, so she got she's one of the the at-risk people, so she got Pfizer up. Um and for your peace of mind, she was really sick. Not even really sick. She was quite sick after the first shot uh, for one day. And then the the next day she was completely fine and she's waiting on her second dose um, and she's completely fine. I have noticed though that that she stopped using her iPhone like completely. That was really weird actually is she gets the, she gets the vaccine and I was expecting her to have like some cold, ish symptoms you know you get some of the COVID symptoms but not too bad just really mildly and then your body gets over it and then and then builds up an immune response to COVID and then so if you do get it it's fine so I knew that she was going to be out for a day feeling kind of coldish so that was normal but what was really weird was after that day she was in bed like all day and I'm like, oh, do you want to watch something on Netflix? I get out the the laptop, you know, the Apple, the MacBook. And she's like, oh, no, I don't want to watch it on that. I'm like, oh, is the screen too small? She goes, no, nah, I just don't want to use that anymore. And she hasn't used the MacBook at all, which is weird because she spent a lot of money on it, you know? It was like a work tool for her and she she used to use it all day. Now she doesn't use it at all. And she, and then I'm like, okay, well then do you want to like, maybe we can play some Hearthstone on the iPhone. And she's like, I like Hearthstone. I don't want to play it on the iPhone. And I noticed that she got out of, out of the drawer that we, that's in the back of the house, like an old, an old windows phone that she used to have. And she only uses that now. It's from like fucking 2011 and she only uses that. And then, and then I fucking get home one day and she's bought like a, like a Windows 10 Surface tablet. They're like $1,500. I don't know where she got the money from. She, she actually sold the MacBook so she could get a Surface Pad Pro. Isn't that weird? And then I, I log on to my MacBook and I open it up and, and the whole operating system's been changed to Windows 10. I'm like, what are you doing? She goes, I just think it works better. I'm like, yeah, but I edit on Final Cut. She goes, you should use, you should use Adobe Premiere. I'm like, what's, what's gotten into you? It's really weird. She does, she only uses Windows products now. I don't know why. But other than that, there's been no like adverse symptoms from her getting the Pfizer vaccine at all. So I don't understand why people are hesitant to get that shit. It's fine. I mean, if you're an Apple user, it seems to get expensive because you're you, obviously she's just compelled to get off that operating system, but that's fine. You know, it's not like those products are hard to find. I don't know what people are fucking complaining about. The other day she was looking at adopting children like orphans from Africa. And I'm like, what the fuck do you want that for? And she looked at me and she started muttering about adrenochrome. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck's gotten into her. But other than that, she's she's completely fine. (laughs) 
Guys, this episode of the Spearhead Sundays podcast is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the best pube shaver in the game. Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping a Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0 personal pube nut hair shaver. This thing is great. I've said it many times before. It's all I use. It's got a little light on the front. The blades on it haven't cut me once, and I go like this, skin to, skin to blade, baby. That's how I do it. I'm a little bit more careful with the ball bag because that's where the jewels are kept, but that's it. It's It just doesn't ever cut me, and it never has, and hopefully it never will. I don't think it ever is going to. I've had it for, for I think, over a year now, and it's I've never, ever had an issue, which is more than I can say for every other razor I've ever used. I've used, like fucking $250 beard trimmers, horrific, cut me up like nothing. I've used like man, like shitty razors, obviously terrible idea. This was back when I was broke. Never do that. I've used really nice expensive hand razors. Also didn't work at all. Like there was less cuts, but they still fucked me up. And then the regrowth was unbearable. This just makes it a nice length that isn't going to irritate you when it starts to grow back. It doesn't look like you haven't started puberty yet. It's just a nice trimmed, clean aesthetic look makes everything look look a little bit bigger uh doesn't make you itchy doesn't rub doesn't scratch isn't too sure it's just fucking perfect i cannot recommend this enough so go to manscape.com use code spears 20% 20% off and free shipping, the Lawnmower 3.0. They have a bunch of other grooming products as well. They got nose hair trimmers. I don't have nose hairs. I'm sure a bunch of my WOG listeners do. Check that shit out. Ear hairs, if there are any Alzheimer's patients with ears, uh, hair sprouting out their ears because you're incredibly ancient, get that shit. Um, and uh, yeah, I really recommend it. I use it all the time and uh, I'm stoked that they sponsor the show. So use code SPEARS, 20% off and free shipping, the Lawnmower 3.0, manscaped.com. Get on it. Support the brands that support the show because that's how I keep this shit spinning, especially because stand-up's illegal again. Fuck. Please use the code. All right, with that out of the way, uh, news things. Uh, Israel versus Palestine is over. Congratulations to all of the TikTok kids and and uh, the the girls with Black Lives Matter in their in their bio on Instagram posting pretty aesthetic stories. Uh, you solved it. It's done. It's finished, and 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 it'll never flare up again. Um, and I think that that all of these people that that preached the Israel Palestine conflict is not complicated. It's very simple. Remember that argument that I fucking trashed, you know, calling a literally over a thousand year conflict simple? Insane. It's incredibly complex. It always has been. It always will be. But I loved people trying to go, it's really simple. So yeah, bad things are bad. That is simple. The reason why they happen, incredibly complex. And the path to stopping them from continuing to happen, even more complex because it's a thousand year problem that deals with ancient religions, geopolitics, World War II, before that fucking uh, genocide, gentrification, racism, anti-Semitism, uh, anti-Palestinian. It's like so much shit, so many issues compounding, conflating that makes the solution and the road to peace unbelievably complex. That doesn't mean don't try, but it's incredibly complex. I love, though, all of these people that were... Just a two, just two weeks ago saying, it's not complex. It's incredibly simple. Acting like it when Israel announces a ceasefire. They're going, oh, sweet. So it's done. Simple. That's what happens when you simplify something as complex as that. When one tiny thing changes, a what will obviously be temporary ceasefire, everyone on Instagram that thought the answer was just, just stop. Stop it. They go, oh, great, it's, it's fixed. That was, that was easy. That was simple. And that's what I've been told to believe. So it's simple. So the solution was ceasefire. Now it's done and it'll never flare up again. Sweet. And they've completely forgotten about it. All these people that had their homes destroyed, all these people that had their homes repossessed and their land taken, forgotten about because one country, well, the two countries were like, oh, ceasefire. Do you know what? 
a ceasefire means for now. But simple. So it's done. Moving on. <laughs> I don't know. That's that's why I hate all of that fucking Instagram and TikTok act, activism. Not saying that you shouldn't speak out when things are bad, but you should never try and yell at people for acknowledging that an issue is really complex to solve because when you get a bunch of people to just act like it's simple, they will act like it's simple and they will accept an incredibly simple thing as a conclusion when it's just not, you know? Because now Netanyahu, the leader of Israel, is, uh, from what I've read anyway, it may not happen, but from what I've read, it looks like he's being replaced, the leader of Israel, with a far-right version of him. So a guy more to the right of Netanyahu, a dude that started out as his protege and then became his rival, uh, has, like, organized, basically like how the liberals and the nationals formed a one super party so that they can win elections, whereas they previously would not be able to. Uh, That's happened in Israel now. From my understanding, I may be kind of wrong uh, because, again, incredibly complex. Uh, And uh, Netanyahu now now may be ousted. And if that happens, the new leader of Israel will be further to the right than Netanyahu. Watch what happens. Uh, But for now, it's a ceasefire. So if you think that the issue is simple, then you think the issue is done and you've completely forgotten about it. You noticed how you're not seeing any of that shit anymore that's what happens when you act like something like this is incredibly simple you hear one thing and you go oh well that's the answer that was it's done that was easy moving on time to change my bio to something else some other fucking flag i don't know um what else do I want to talk about here? Oh, the, the Logan Paul Mayweather fight uh, is also huge. Um, I'm recording this on Sunday, the day before the fight. So if you're watching this this podcast after the fight or you're watching a clip after the fight, uh, I'm recording it before the fight. So uh, look, I think that Mayweather's obviously going to win. I think uh, he's just going to do to Logan what he did to Conor McGregor, but even worse because Conor at least had some stand-up game uh, and was a boxer himself and also was was a southpaw, like left-handed, which would have thrown uh, even someone like Mayweather off at least a little bit. Um, Logan, from my uh, uh, from my understanding, is bigger in terms of height and reach than... Connor, is that right? How tall is Connor? Because Logan's six one or two. Connor McGregor height. What's he? Is he six foot? One point seven three. What is that? In feet. Show me feet. Five foot nine. Oh fuck, he's kind of short. Okay. So Logan Paul's a lot bigger than him. Logan Paul height. In feet. How tall is he? 6'2". Okay, okay, that's big. And Mayweather height in feet is uh, 5'8". Okay, so that's a huge difference. So, but even though that's like, I don't know, it's like it's like putting, it's, it's literally like putting Usain Bolt up against like Jake Paul. Usain Bolt in like 15 years against Jake Paul. Or someone Jake Paul's age. It's like, yeah, he's a lot older, but he's still fucking the best in the world, or at least was. Like, that shit doesn't just go away because you're a little bit older. And also, it's not like Floyd stopped training either. Like, Floyd fought pretty recently uh, and seems to keep himself fit. Like, he's one of those athletes that doesn't seem to have gotten unfit. Like, didn't really seem to have stopped training uh, obviously not as intensely. You would never do that permanently, but it doesn't seem like he ever got fat or lazy or whatever. Um, so I think Logan almost definitely loses, but there is that chance of that one punch. Like that's not crazy to think. Like, like you know, Connor tagged uh, Floyd a couple times with some good hits that, you saw make Floyd go, okay, time to stop playing. If he hits me again like that, that's going to hurt. So, I, but, but, but also professional career boxers have also hit Floyd before and he hasn't gone down. Like he's never, 
ever lost a fight. He's never lost a fight. That you want you got to understand that's fucking crazy. 50 fights he's never lost. I don't think a YouTuber is going to be the one to add that one to his uh his tally. But it's going to it's it's a fucking from a promotion and a marketing stand of point of view, it's an incredible achievement by Logan Paul. Uh but he's going to lose. But even then, like Logan comes out of the other side. Whether he wins the fight or not, he he wins this entire exchange. Floyd is actually lowering his value by going from being undisputably one of the best boxers alive, never having lost an actual boxing fight, to then fighting a UFC fighter and winning. Cool. It's not a boxing match, but at least he's a fighter. And then taking another step down and fighting a fucking YouTuber. To me... That would be like Jay-Z doing a song with Jake Paul. Like, yeah, he would make a lot of money, but he wouldn't be Jay-Z anymore. You know, like the minute you you step from the best in the world with all of this brand value and all this mystique around you of like the best to ever do it, the minute you take a step down and work with a YouTuber, no matter how good the YouTuber is at boxing and how big the YouTuber is, you're still going from from being the best in the world to uh, stooping down to that that level, to, in, in my view. Whereas from Logan's point of view, what a fucking win or lose, what a huge step up. He's going from the biggest YouTuber in the world, which is like, yeah, sure, he's the biggest in the world, but he is still just a YouTuber. Stepping up to boxing the best boxer alive at the moment that's a huge step up. And even if he loses, he's now in that arena outside of the, uh, he steps out of the box of YouTuber, which is a really difficult box to step out of. I say that as someone who has managed to step out of it, it took me fucking years to shift the focus on my career from a guy on YouTube to a stand up comedian with a YouTube channel. That took me like three years to slowly shift out of, uh, Logan's doing it in in like one event, which is this. Bang. He's no longer a YouTuber. He's the guy that fought Floyd Mayweather. Win or lose, that's beyond incredible. Because if he wins, oh my God, he beat the best boxer in the world. That's crazy. He won't win. But if he does, that'll break the fucking universe. But if he loses, the whole world will go, well, of course, he was a YouTuber. That was the expected outcome. Floyd, if he loses, he's done forever. He he will eternally be the guy who lost to a YouTuber. Obviously, he will not. But imagine if he did. He's fucking done forever. Imagine the memes. 50 cents count will be lit. If, if Logan Paul wins, I am running straight to 50 cents Instagram. You know it, right? But if he wins... No one's going to go, yes. No one's going to go, fuck yeah, I can't believe he did it. Everyone's going to go, wow, dude, you fought a YouTuber? Why would you do that? That's kind of sad, dude. That's like me as a 27-year-old, you know, beating the fuck out of a 16-year-old. Even if the kid started the fight, people go, ah, he's fucking 16, dude. Why would you? You couldn't walk away? (laughs) Yeah, so so I think it's a fucking genius move by Logan Paul to to pull off the fight. I think it's weird for Floyd to do it unless he's having money trouble. Uh, even then, I would rather just sell one of my cars, you know? Like, do you need that money? I don't know. Maybe maybe I have different principles. The guy's name is is Money Mayweather, isn't it? That is he has uh, changed his entire He's named his entire business The Money Team. So I guess he's staying true to to his goal, which is like money. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's cool. I think Logan loses, obviously. But but over, but Logan, Logan loses the fight, but Logan wins overall because of the money and the public perception and, and just the massive step up. Like the, the guy's changing the world uh, by doing this. For the better, probably not, but he is making a massive impact. It's crazy. Like I was in a, I was in a pub in like uh, just like a couple hours outside of the Gold Coast. That was like it was. I was performing, and it was all like fifty-year-old boomers, 
It was one of those uh, TAB pubs where you could gamble and shit. And on every single table, there was a flyer for the Logan Paul Floyd Mayweather fight. That's fucking crazy for a pub in Australia for 50 plus men and women to have those posters there. The cunt has won. Whether he wins or loses, Logan Paul has won this. I don't know what he's won, but time will tell. The dude is a fucking genius. Big comeback story. And and the funniest thing about it is how Jake Paul is acting like the Floyd Mayweather versus Logan Paul fight is something that he should be proud of. That's the funniest thing about it. If you go on Jake Paul's Twitter, he's acting like it's like he's like, yeah, I did this. I did it. I'm the, it's like, dude, you're standing next to the guy who did it. You're not the guy who did it. You're standing next to the guy who did it. You're probably a better fighter. If I was Logan, I wouldn't want to fight Jake. He seems to be a fucking beast. Like an actual, like should not be that good for how little he's been doing it type guy. Like natural beast animal in the ring. He seems to be a fucking natural at it. Like to beat Ben Askren so easily, sure, Ben didn't train and he was fat, but he's still a legit UFC fighter. To beat someone who has the training lodged in their brain from, you know, years and years and years of only doing that and only striving to do that, to beat them, whether or not they've trained, is a phenomenal feat. Um, But you're not fighting Floyd, bro. You haven't done this shit. You're just standing next to the guy who's going to fight Floyd. All right. I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. Thank you very much for listening. That is the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm going to continue on now for Patreon supporters, the Sunday supplement. If you would uh, like to hear the miscellaneous bit at the end, I've got a couple of emails that I'm going to do exclusive to Patreon because I've run out of time here and I wanted to do them. So I'm going to do them on Patreon. If you want to listen to that, um, support me on Patreon no matter what tier you support me you get the podcast um exclusive all right so thank you very much i'll see you guys next sunday uh i got videos coming out as well i know i haven't uploaded for fucking ages but it's COVID. i was i was supposed to have a break after the festival and then we were supposed to come back and start working and then COVID happened and y- you know the fucking deal but uh i'm getting back into the swing of it now uh and uh videos will be returning very soon until then i will talk to you next sunday Uh, unless you're going to continue listening to the Patreon podcast, in which case I'll see you over there. All right. Thank you very much. I'm Lewis Spears and I hope you have a shit one. Goodbye.